Plus metaphor, back for more to kick the roll. Representative who was you and I verse. Gonna do a video on um, Pisces rising, but Aquarius in the twelfth house, right? So Aquarius in the twelfth house would be fixed air. Being consistent or stubborn on the way of thinking and communicating, right? So that direct thought. And the Pisces would be the immutable water. Being a, able to adapt or adjust other people's ways of conveying emotion or your own way of conveying emotion. This is where the Pisces can be kind of different people. But yeah, that's um, <clears throat> kind of like a bit of a third house video if you think about it. And the Pisces in the third house, we'll just kind of break that down, is the Taurus. So whatever is practical in that moment, in the environment, to um, communicate, that's what they'll communicate. But yeah, <clears throat> this is on the twelfth house, being an Aquarius. And like I say, with that fixed or consistent, like I say, consistent or stubborn thought being fixed, or that way of communicating, you're going to communicate about a certain dream. And it's so... In a, it's in a certain space that um, only certain people can comprehend it, right? So to say, I like to break down the air signs kind of like a pyramid scheme. Like the Gemini can communi communicate about anything and any time, any space. They're like past, present, and future being mutable. Cardinal would be the one to initiate a thought or a communication style. So it's kind of in the middle. It's, it's not able to, it's not, I mean, it's able to, but it's not going to just communicate about anything. It's going to kind of structure things more. And the Aquarius is like the tip of the pyramid, or like the, the bubble. And the, like you have all this air that we participate in, but the Aquarius is like the little bubble, right? So you think about the 12th house being the dreams, illusions, and nightmares. So you, in your dreams, illusions, and nightmares, you have a fixed way of communicating about that. A fixed way of thinking about your dreams to say like, okay, if this thought that I've accumulated hasn't achieved or um, come to be in reality, right? Which the sixth house would be Leo. So the way that you put your um, expression is on a consistent pattern or a, a way of routine, right? Or like I say, routine or pattern with your sixth house. And this is the way you would bring those 11th house, uh, I'm sorry, those 12th house of dreams to reality is being able to express yourself in a fixed way as well. So consistent or stubborn on your way of expressing oneself on a routine or pattern. So to say, okay, think about the Aquarius. Well, the Pisces is generally a very creative individual and you think about that Aquarius being the 12th house. So that you wanna have this thought of creativity being in a, in a fixed space. So being able to communicate about where you wanna be. You see what I'm saying? Where that thought could you know end up and where it could actually be expressed, the sixth house. So to say, okay, I have this consistent way of thinking about my dream, which I say Pisces is a very creative individual. You think about that maybe being a big time movie director or something like that, or um, something like that. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So you think about the first thing you gotta, like your first consistent or uh, stubborn thought is like, okay, I have, a, have to have a nice camera and a, and a good crew, right? So this is the Aquarius bringing you know, that little 12th house dream of being a, a program director or a director of a movie. Okay, I got to bring these people together and talk to them about my dream for them to even see my illusion or where it could go. You see what I'm saying? So once you see where it can go with this Aquarius thought, then you're going to start to put that on a schedule. Say, okay, if we want to make this movie, I see this movie being made in 90 days. You have this direct thought like, okay, this is how this is what we can do in 90 days. We can make this whole movie. So boom, you're gonna put that Leo sixth house on a schedule and say, okay, I'm gonna express myself to say, okay, we have to be here at six to six o'clock at night every every single day if we want to get this done in 90 days. So with this expression, so to say, like, okay, I want to actually be on the stage and put this movie out in 120 days after we're done editing it for a whole month. So it's like, okay, about about half uh, almost half of a year a quarter of a, um, a quarter of a uh, I'm sorry a third of a year because it'd be four months you see what I'm saying think like, okay from four months from now can I see this thought being accumulated and this is where you want to like I say put that on a schedule and say okay six o'clock to six at night every every week and for like I say for four months so that'd be um, three six nine twelve weeks so you say, okay, we can complete this, all this in 12 weeks. But in order to be able to be prepared for this release date in four months, we have to put our expression on a schedule and actually show up every day and put that routine and pattern of expression. You understand what I'm saying? 
So, like I say, that's the best way to bring this uh, consistent thought or communication style. Like I said, communication style could even be your script, right? So, like, all you're talking about is your script in that whole um, month before, um, even sh even putting the shooting pattern on a, on a routine, you see what I mean? Like shooting the video, <laughs> or movie, or, or scene, you see what I'm saying? You want to be able to say, okay, if we get all these scenes done this week for the, for the, you know, the theme of the movie, and actually, you know, bring people in to say, okay, this is gonna, this is where the movie's going, we're gonna do each, this scene, this amount of scenes this week, this amount of scenes this week, and so on. So to say you're gonna express yourself on a consistent, um, or stubborn basis, right? Like it's a fixed nature. So you want to balance the way that you ex just put, say, to, say like, okay, I want you to just, you know, be in front of the camera and do your thing. You know what I mean? Express yourself. You want to have a consistent balance between, okay, is my dream illusion nightmare being accumulated through this certain way of expression in this in this uh, routine and pattern? Like, is six o'clock to six at night doing? We're doing enough, for example. And the ways that you would kind of regulate this would be your square houses. You look at the ninth house, okay, the knowledge and wisdom of these individuals and the experience. Do they have a good, large enough experience level, so to say? Like, are they able to um, actually travel to anywhere we need to, like mentally or physically? You see what I'm saying? So, do they have that ex ex uh, experience level to know... Right, like with the Aquarius, the ninth house would be, um, let me think about it. The ninth house would be the square to Leo, would be a Scorpio, yeah. So the Scorpio, you would have a fixed water in your ninth house, your knowledge and wisdom and experience that you have, you're going to be consistent or stubborn upon the way that you feel about it. Like, okay, can this person, does this person make me feel like they can actually achieve what I have, um, you know, dreamt into my illusion, you see what I mean? And is it becoming a nightmare or not? You see, that's where that square jumps in. It's like, okay, do I want to tap more into just being fixed communicating? Or do I want to say, okay, I got to understand that there's pressure between the way I communicate and the way I make people feel. So you want to be aware of that body language and that, that ninth house and how people are uh, interacting, you know, on the set, for example, of your movie. Like, does somebody have a good attitude only in front of the camera or are they all around having a good attitude? You see what I'm saying? These are things you want to look at and you think about the other square, which would be the third house to the twelfth house. And like I say, that was Taurus. So it's like, are you going to be consistent or stubborn upon your way of communicating in this environment? Like I mentioned earlier, are you going to switch up and be a different individual each and every time? Like be that Pisces rising? Or are you going to stick to the script and say, okay, this is the fixed earth that I've created to this environment. I'm going to stick to that and be consistent on my way of practicality and organizing the environment. And this is, like like I say, that little square between the sixth house wanting to put the routine and pattern of expression on, um, on a schedule and wanting to say, okay, do we have enough individuals in the environment to actually practically bring this scene to life? So yeah, that's how you look at all the little squares and the oppositions of how to work with your chart as well. So yeah, uh, much love to y'all. This is the Pisces Rising video, and this is the end of the series. So this is the um, end of the end of all of the Rising videos I'm gonna do, and we're gonna go into something brand new right for this. And I'm looking for it to be the Moon, and then we're gonna kind of move into a little bit of Mercury, and I think that's a nice place to start. The way you feel, which is the Moon, and the way you think, which is Mercury, and those are the next videos I'm planning on doing videos on. I, I might do a little video each each time the Moon moves. So. Yeah, that'll be a thing that I'm doing, and then also every time Mercury moves, which is, you know, every about every two weeks. I'll um, try to do a little bit longer live stream. I'm going to do probably a live stream or an extended video, one of the two, and um, be able to go through each uh, each house where Mercury is moving through in the, each chart. So, example, we have Mercury in Capricorn right now. So if you had Mercury in Capricorn, uh, Mercury, if Kirk, pardon me, if you had Capricorn in the first house, Mercury in Capricorn would be thinking about your way of personality, way of your first impression to people. Like, okay, 
Capricorn being Cardinal Earth, being initiated and creating new ways of logistics and practicality. Like, okay, am I showing the actual logistical side of myself? Am, am I thinking about the correct things? Am I being practical in my personal life? Like, am I putting putting what I need to put together? You see what I mean? And then you think about the opposite of that. You know, this, this is kind of easy way to just break it down real quick. For an example, you think about, like I say, that's in your first house. And if you're... Um, Cancer rising, then Capricorn would be in your seventh house. So you think about the way that you relate to be a very practical way. You want to be able to be initiating, creating new ways of thinking about your relationship and being practical about your relationship and how you relate. So the, the Cancer has to be more serious. The Cancer has to be less in their emotions whenever they're dealing with this alignment. And like I say, the Capricorn in the first house, that's what they do personally. So you're just evaluating how you personally interact but the cancer is looking how they interact with others individuals and how they relate you understand what i'm saying it's not all about them personally it's about how they're dealing with the other individual so yeah uh, much love and uh, holla back and you can holla at me for a uh, consultation reading it'll chart reading all type of stuff at a uh, conscious one three four seven at gmail.com that is c-o-n-s-c-i-o-u-s one three four seven at gmail.com and uh, peace and love y'all much love Thanks for checking out the thank you for checking out the series.